You know what I'm saying? With Zach, he didn't leave Chicago. He was... When you extend your hand to help a nigga that's drowning, but he's drowning with his bitch, you extending your hand to help him, that nigga might pull you down and kill you, you know what I'm saying? Just so it don't seem like, so he don't seem inferior in front of his bitch. Understand, niggas will hate the nigga that helped them more than the nigga that got them in that situation where they needed help. Used to be my nigga. I put purple cush my switch. I put purple cush my switch. I cook ground size as nigga. I cook ground size as nigga. Should've known you wasn't enough fish. Should've known you wasn't enough fish. Cook used to be my nigga. Pat sure used to be my nigga. Welcome back to the Big Facts Podcast. I am A.O. Conseco, the fearless leader of A.O. Nation. And this is Are You Serious? As in, you niggas just will not get enough of um, shooting yourself in the foot. The niggas who killed Zach were from Chicago. Zach had just got robbed, you know what I'm saying, not too long ago. They ran up in his goddamn, uh, ran up in his apartment, you know what I'm saying, took his shit, whatever like that. He was online talking about, uh, uh, I don't give a fuck, y'all can, you know what I'm saying, y'all can keep everything else, I just need my laptop. You know what I'm saying? Like, to get my laptop back, anybody who got information, I'm going to take care of you and shit like that. Like, folks in Chicago did not fuck with Zach TV. And this is something that you won't know. You won't know this shit. Most of the time, the reason why we work so hard is to prove a point to the folks that we grew up with. A motherfucker could care less about what the fucking world thinks. The only reason we need for the world to rock with us is so that we can rub it in the faces of the people in our hometown and say, see, I told y'all we're going to do this shit. I told y'all was right. Nigga, I'm the man. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just want to flex on them niggas. The fucked up part about it is once you get to that point where you can really muscle up and flex on the fuck niggas that you came up with that didn't believe in you, they have to retaliate. Retaliation comes after someone has offended you. Where did the offense take place? The offense take, took place when you become successful. You don't have to say, fuck nigga, I did, I told you, fuck nigga, you know what I'm saying? That shit was gonna work, fuck nigga, you niggas ain't believe in shit. Fuck nigga, now nah, what's up, whole ass nigga, I told you, fuck nigga, I'm right, B, you fuck niggas ain't got shit. Whole ass nigga, you still working a job, bitch ass nigga. I'm around that whole bitch, I, I hold everyone, nigga. Everybody know who the fuck I am, bitch ass nigga. Fuck you talking about duck nigga? You don't have to say that because they can already see your success. Your success says all of that in their head. Silently. They say 75% of communication is nonverbal, but I really believe that it's 90. Most of communication is nonverbal. What you say to me means nothing. The way that you walk up to me means everything. Do you extend your hand? How aggressively are you walking? Are you smiling? What's your facial expression like? You know what I'm saying? Are you sweating? This is what matters. I can give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas say anything. What do you do, yeah. what, what niggas are saying back and forth, really, I, I've said it before. Like, the Ebonics is, is more of a dance than a language. Even though, in some places, dance is language. You know what I'm saying? Like a war dance and shit like that. Um, this see this situation. It, it takes me back where there was uh, my nigga cook up was into it with Pastor Troy, and I, I was so glad that that situation had got squashed because Pastor Troy is like you know what I'm saying a real nigga and shit like that. But cook up is this nigga is really about that like that. And when you got niggas who are was once homeboys. And the communication was off. That's really what that was. But when you got niggas become killers when their pride is involved. You know what I'm saying? And this is what this situation was. You know what I'm saying? With Zach, he didn't leave Chicago. He was... When you extend your hand to help a nigga that's drowning... 
but he's drowning with his bitch, you extending your hand to help him, that nigga might pull you down and kill you, you know what I'm saying? Just so it don't seem like, so he don't seem inferior in front of his bitch. Understand, niggas will hate the nigga that helped them more than the nigga that got them in that situation where they needed help. A nigga will hate you for coming to his house and giving him the money for the light bill. If you didn't give him that money for that light bill, his whole house would have been, you know what I'm saying? I mean, his kids, his bitch, you know what I'm saying? That nigga see you in the street, that, you know what I'm saying? You may not understand nor notice the shit, but please, please, I'm telling you, the quicker that you can acknowledge the jealousy the faster that you can resolve it or the faster you can get the fuck away from that nigga I'm telling you this situation is going to continue to happen all of you niggas on the come up listen to me what Zach did was interview niggas that were on the come up in Chicago all over he interviewed them he interviewed them and shit like that them niggas ain't pop. The reason why he was trying so hard to get these niggas on is because he knew who the fuck he was dealing with. He wasn't dealing with no businessmen, no Ivy League scholars. He was dealing with real fucking Wolverines. And when you're dealing with this Wolverine with no fucking mind, he don't understand views, analytics, promotion, marketing, social media, Running, you know I'm saying like promo tours and shit like that, moving around. All he know is this nigga got a camera. He gonna make me famous. He go home and tell his mama, "Oh my, hell yeah, my mama on now. Hell yeah, I got a, I got a video on YouTube. Hell yeah, a video come on YouTube. I told y'all I was gonna make it. She tell, yeah, he, oh this, this boy Zach TV. Yeah, he, you know what I'm saying he got, he got over oh, got a hundred thousand subscribers. Oh, yeah, you know that money. Oh yeah, he got it. He already on. You know what I'm saying? He say, I'm like your little brother. You gotta watch how you talk to these motherfuckers. They take that shit to heart. You say, what up? Well, I, I like the music. That nigga take that shit. Well, he said he gonna get me signed. And it, he not gonna have no understanding. Dog, I'm telling you, these upcoming rappers, street niggas, have no fucking understanding. Me, myself, I like to deal, I immediately, I find out what an artist is on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where his mind is at, whatever. If you just a retarded ass street nigga, whatever like that, hey, do your thing. Do your thing. You need to be about your business here. Because we're not going to have no misunderstanding. Because just like with Cook Up and Pass the Troll, whatever like that, like niggas bump heads about that. This side ain't going to back, this side ain't going to back. So somebody dying and somebody going to prison about that shit. I much rather deal with people who understand what this business is. This is about entertainment, and entertainment is all about promotion and marketing. As I just told y'all about Six Nine, if the white man wasn't pushing Six Nine and forcing him upon you because he was promoting what they want to actually happen, the message that they want to get across, he's their voice. He's the white man's voice. He's the white supremacist's voice. Of course, the, Donald Trump can't just come out. If he made a mistake, of course, niggas will listen to it, but they wouldn't ride to it. He, they wouldn't ride to it and let it hypnotize them. While niggas that listen to music, they're being hypnotized by it. The beat is like a dance. You seen, I'm saying, um, uh, get out, tap the thing, whatever like that. You in a trance. I'm talking to you a certain way with a certain tone. When a nigga go do some retarded shit, he's listening to the music. When a nigga get in that police car, ain't no fucking music, dog. The, the, know what I'm saying? The officer might turn it on, but know what I'm saying? He might not. And it don't matter if he do. You don't want to hear no music. Because, and then, actually, look at this. When you in the back of that police car and Future come on, you just got bam, know what I'm saying? And you looking out the window and they just come out the house with the goddamn, like, like, they come out the, the house with the shoebox, the Nike shoebox that the dope in. And future plan. Y'all niggas sell that dope. Uh, Y'all niggas sell that dope. Y'all niggas sell, know what I'm saying? Like, that shit sound different, don't it? It sound different then. Lord blessing all the trap niggas. Lord blessing all the trap niggas. Like, whoa. No, this shit ain't right, dog. No. 
No, he not. Like, no, that, that, that ain't right. That's wrong what you're saying. Oh, my God. They got the guy. Oh, my God. They got the dogs. They got the dogs. Jesus. Oh, my God. Lord, blessing all the trap news. That is all the trap. They got the gun. Oh, my God. Turn the shit off. Turn. Please turn the music off. Please turn the music off. Please turn the music off. Please let this be a dream. Please let this be a dream. Jesus, please let this be a dream. Oh, my God. I guarantee you, when niggas rolled up and hit Zach, they were listening to their music. Niggas was in a zone. How ironic. Malice. Pusha T's brother said, when I thought back on how many people had died and went to prison listening to my music like they died in the song that was playing in the background like in the car when niggas shot in the head in the car like you know what I'm saying the music that's playing is you know what I'm saying push like the clip shit or you know what I'm saying niggas selling dope and when the, the undercover officer get in the car the music that's playing you know what I'm saying and when you in the fairs whatever like that they play back the audio and so that you, they'll, they, they gonna play you the audio and show you the video of what they got you on, like so they'll give you the night like, the the video and let you see yourself selling the undercover agent dope, whatever like that. And you'll get to hear everything. And you'll hear what song was on the radio, what you were listening to. Rocking out to that Rich Homie Quan, that, that good future. Lucci. I ain't gonna say thug. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, you know what I'm saying? You rocking. Kevin Gates, money bag, you going ham on that shit. But as these killers when they hit Zach, when they sped off, they listen to music. When they when they want to justify what they did, they start pointing. Hit a nigga with an A-R. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you get a lot more crunk when you actually did what niggas talking about in this song. This is niggas just because niggas live here with this music. But that's 6 9 shit. But it, it's, everything is entwined. Everything is entwined. See... The niggas that killed Zach, they're, they're gonna be, they're gonna, you know, it's gonna be fucked up for them in just a second because what you niggas ain't understand is the, just like the niggas who killed Crump, you did this for a name. They killed him for, for a name. They want to be the niggas that are known for killing this nigga. Um, D said that um, Crump had a reputation for beating niggas up like D thing and, and you know what I'm saying? This nigga had hands and shit like that. That's what he was arguing with Nooski's cousin about, about how, you know what I'm saying, he beat niggas up but the, the young nigga said you ain't got no bodies. You just beat niggas up and shit like that. Niggas it's kind of like you, t like Shao Kahn or whatever nigga name is on Mortal Kombat, where when he beat a nigga, he take his soul. And he, he can turn into any one of the people that he's killed or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Shao Kahn or whatever. This is what these niggas are acting like. And it's kind of how it happens. You, you're you known, when you go to prison, you're going to be known as the nigga who killed Crump. The nigga who killed Zack TV. And I'm telling you, when the killers give you the spiel... About why they killed him, it gonna be Xanaran's all on it. Because what we don't know, we don't know how deep this shit go. Believe me, believe me, this shit get real. You don't know, and that's everybody speaking about Zach, good dude, Zach, good dude, and shit like that. I'm telling you, dog. I'm telling you, when these killers come up front, it's gonna be some shit that comes to light that niggas is not gonna be expecting. Believe me, we can, we can play all this good shit we wanna play because, and that's another thing. You fuck niggas do a whole lot of goddamn, oh, man, that, man, man, he, man, he was so important, man, man, see, man, I remember, man, it's you, oh, man, man, that, you a fuck nigga too, dog. oh, man, dog, man, it's so fucked up, man, oh, man, oh, oh, man, niggas doing all this goddamn whooping and, and talking about, and niggas, and it's so fucked up because niggas use this shit as relevance for them. I knew him. I was, I was. I talked to him right before he died. Everybody want to be talking to a nigga right before he died. I made a meme about that shit. Like, 
a, a nigga get the most busy when he about to die. Cause after he dead, everybody say they just fucking talk to him. Oh man, oh man. Nobody ain't really speaking, but everybody who's speaking is niggas that's not from there. What is the Chicago niggas saying? Them niggas know what the fuck went on. Niggas know what the fuck going down. Like I said, like, it's gonna be a lot of shit said, and a lot of niggas using niggas' name for relevance and shit like that, and you just, dog. At this point in time, what we can take away from this, what, I, what I'm pulling away from this shit or whatever, fuck how a nigga feel, I'm still here. Like, that's that music shit again. IJ used to say, trying to be like your favorite rapper. All right, trying to be like your favorite rapper. He was saying, like, you're going to get fucked up trying to be like your favorite rapper. What a nigga say in the song, don't let this shit really, you know what I'm saying, dictate your fucking life. Still here. Look, boost it left. Like, niggas who want to enjoy their wealth and what they work so hard for, they leave that place because it's like these people are going to kill you. There's no, uh, I'm still, I'm still, dog, you're going to die like that. You know if your city is hypnotized with hatred, as Boosie said. You know if it is or not. If it ain't like that, then sit there. If motherfuckers don't envy what you got going on and you know it, if motherfuckers dab you off and you know they don't like you, if motherfuckers only speak to you because, like, you own right now, then you know what the fuck going on. But if you got a city that don't say everybody just wanted you to win... Everybody just doing good and nobody's jealous of what you got going on. Ain't nobody in the city scared that you going to fuck they bitch. Ain't nobody in the city secretly thinking that they should have your spot or thinking that you fucked them over. I'm telling you, the more you deal with ignorant people, and Zach was dealing with a lot of fucking ignorant people, retarded people. Really retarded. You got niggas coming home from prison doing interviews. Thinking that that interview is going to take them to the next fucking level in this music shit. Niggas thinking that they really own because they in front of a fucking camera. My nigga, are you serious? Nobody gives a fuck. Like, how many niggas have you actually went and looked at their music from looking at fucking Zach TV's fucking interview? Really, all you want to see is a fucking interview. What the fuck they said. You might go listen to their music. You're not going to go buy the shit, though. You're not going to be one of their fans and... A rapper doesn't, un like, especially not no nigga who just came home from prison. Like, nigga, the fuck? A nigga, all he understand is, I, I'm gonna get fans from this shit. And that's it. Like, dog, you have to do so much fucking more to be a successful artist. Especially if you saying something. If you're not promoting the death, death, murder, kill, kill all black folks, then the fucking powers that be are not gonna force you upon folks. Which means you're gonna actually have to work. You're going to actually have to put your whole life into this music shit. Which means you have to sacrifice everything else. And nobody wants to fucking do that. But everybody wants to be famous. And an ignorant person really can't, you know what I'm saying? That shit right there, don't, it, they can't comprehend that shit. So now they start looking for folks to blame for their failures. And the last person they can think of that actually tried to help them is you. I'm telling you, if a nigga can't come out his ignorance and you know that he's ignorant, stop bragging about niggas being, you know what I'm saying, murder killers, like, you know what I'm saying, death dealers. Stop bragging about that shit because you could be that nigga. Like, you don't understand this. How don't you understand? Just as fucking quick, like, that. I'm telling 6 9 the same shit. Like, just as fucking quick as these niggas are protecting you. We saw with Death Row and this nigga keeps screaming, this the new Death Row. Guess who Tupac is and guess who Suge is? Leave, get away from ignorant, jealous people. That shit right there makes a murderer. Ignorance and jealousy makes a murderer. Big Facts Podcast, I'm A.O. Conseco, R.P. Zach, but it's not going to stop happening. When the killers do come to justice... I believe that they all going to tell on each other, and we're going to find out a lot more about Zach as a person. See you all in a minute.